Welcome to the Property Nomads podcast, five ways to prepare for a property market crash. These are five things that can be easily applied to your personal life and your property portfolio, and that will help you to prepare for the not so good times that are coming up. Now, you might be thinking, Rob, you're a bit doom and gloom recently. You know, why is that? We like to provide as much realistic and as pragmatic information as possible onto the podcast. That's why we do it. Uh, we want to try and be different, not for the sake of being different, but be realistic, be pragmatic, offer out very suitable advice. That being said, these are not in any particular order of importance. They are just five things, uh, five ways to prepare. Number one, speak to your mortgage broker. Now, the reason for this is you might want to consider your mortgage position at the moment, depending on what you read and who you listen to. Uh, some people are saying to put mortgages onto long-term fixed deals at the moment. Uh, maybe you're on a bunch of tracker rates. Maybe you're, you are on a bunch of variable rate mortgages. If that's the case, uh, you know, will interest rates increase? Chances are they probably will, but with the amount of quantitative easing that's been done by the Bank of England, they won't really want to in increase the cost of their own debt significantly. So it might be counterintuitive for them to raise interest rates. But again, you don't know. This is why piece of advice number one is speak to your mortgage broker. I know that we are pretty much secure in our fixed rate mortgages for quite a while. So we're in a, we've taken that stance in the portfolio. Uh, maybe you've got mortgages that are coming to an end soon. And uh, maybe the advice from your broker might be to get the remortgage process done sooner rather than later. What you don't want is if you're on high rate mortgages or you're coming to the end of your term and the whole market goes boom, see you later, a boom in a bad way, then you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot. And if you remember, yeah, 2000 and, uh, 2008 to 2010 and a few years after that, it was quite tough financially. And, and for those who have um, actually put it, got more years on, on myself, you're going to remember back to the 90s and you know uh, possibly even earlier than that. So number one, speak to your mortgage broker. Number two, a stress test your portfolio. So if a crash did happen and interest rates went up, again, as I've just explained, that may or may not happen depending on the Bank of England and for other varying reasons as well. What would your portfolio look like if mortgage interest rates went up? So let's just say you've got a, a set of mortgages at 3.5% uh, at the moment, and that's costing you X per month. We'll stress test that. What if the, what if the mortgage rate went up to 6%, 7%? I'm not going to sit here and say, well, you know, it's not what it used to be, and you know, it's unlikely that stuff like this is going to double overnight. You, you just don't know anymore, I think, in this crazy-ass world that we live in. You just don't know. The odds of the interest rates doubling overnight are highly unlikely. That has to be said. Um, but again, you just never know. But importantly, stress test your portfolio. Certainly people my age, in, in early 30s, we're so used to dealing with predominantly incredibly low rates of, of lending, of, of interest. We don't really know what mass inflation, possibly hyperinflation looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like. Of course, if you listen to this and you are a bit wiser, then you might remember it from years, years gone by. But for a lot of people my age, you know, we haven't experienced that. Point being, stress test your portfolio. What does your portfolio look like when interest rates are higher? If it still cash flows really well, fantastic. If it doesn't, you've got some decisions to make. Uh, it has, or I imagine it will happen. If you are teetering on the brink at the moment with lower interest rates and then the interest rates go up, you know, and your cash flow turns negative, that is probably not, well, that is definitely not a good situation to be in at all. So number two, stress test your portfolio. Number three, have your Mo account in a healthy situation. So Mo, as you're probably aware, is monthly operating expenses. Uh, normally suggested that you have three to six months of income stored away in your savings account anyway. That's not just for your business, that's for your personal life as well. Hence why this information kind of covers both. Your Mo account should be in good operation. So don't just have zero in there because if you're caught out by, I don't know, a boiler breakdown or some refurb work that needs doing, or you're planning ahead for all these EPC changes that are going to be happening in 2026, you want to make sure that you're not caught off guard. And this is the same in business as it is in personal life. So make sure that your Mo account is 
in a healthy situation, I would normally advise that you put 10% of your gross income into a Mo account. So if your portfolio makes £10,000 or your rent roll sorry, is £10,000 a month, you might want to be putting £1,000 aside into that reserve account, that savings account. So when the proverbial does hit the fan, you're not fretting. Basically, you're not in a bad position. So that's number three, your Mo account needs to be healthy. Number four, keep looking for opportunities. As we've said time and time and time again on the podcast, opportunities are around us all the time. When markets crash, and they will, then this will create a plethora of opportunities. Are you in a position to buy cash? Do you know much about lease options, for example, just in case people and portfolios get into negative equity? Always be vigilant with regards to opportunities. Bad economic times normally equals great opportunities. Now, I'm not able to compare property to the stock market. If you read things like Warren Buffett and other people, some of the most profitable days of stock market trading or investing has been straight after a crash. Property, when it crashes, will leave a lot of people in a lot of precarious situations. But it also means that if you have the ability to buy cash or you've got a network of investors who would be willing to do things, then you could be in a great position. People, when things crash, people will struggle for finance. You know, if we're basing it on previous crashes, you know, finance will tighten up. There'll be a bit of a doom period and then things will start building back up again, back to normality. I say that with my bunny ears, normality, but there will be opportunities. So if you're ready to buy cash or know people that have got cash, that's the position you want to be in. So that's why you should always keep looking for opportunities no matter what is happening. Number five, uh, keep a profit and loss spreadsheet uh, and a running accounts spreadsheet. And again, this applies to your business and personal life. What is your current financial position? Uh, position sorry. Do you know what your net worth is? What assets do you have? Do you have other assets outside of property? Uh, do you own Bitcoin, for example, or, or various cryptos? Do you own gold and silver? Do you have a a SaaS, you know, all these sorts of things. What do you have? Would you be able to survive for a while if there were dramatic changes in your income? This is where you should at least have three to six months of savings behind you just in case something happens. Again, if you're managing your property portfolio properly, chances are that shouldn't be an issue. You should always have that income there coming in. So just bear that in mind. But knowing what your position is, is incredibly key when you're budgeting and forecasting. You don't need to be taken by surprise and you need to be pre- and you need to be prepared so for myself i've got a ma- massive massive spreadsheet that uh, covers um been doing it for the last couple of years it covers my current financial position looks at net worth as well i, I do a much more in-depth um, analysis of my net worth in february and august that's when i do that but apart from that i'm looking at current you know, situation, what's the savings like, uh, what's the forecast as well, uh, you know, what income's coming in here and there, etc, 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 what are the outgoings, I'm looking at all of that. Now, that runs in the family, uh, quite a few people in the family do the same thing, but some people have no clue, some people have no clue what they're uh, spending on, some people have no idea how much goes out on, on certain things, and then when they do sit down and find the time to sort it out, you find out that they're surprised. You know, oh, I spend X amount on food per month or X amount on clothes. And a lot of people that have challenges with cash flow or income, as I hear many wealthier, more wealthier people say, if you also look at the other side, look at the spending side, and you can cut down, you know, some spending here and there, you might find that helps you. But of course, as every good entrepreneur says, you know, always look at increasing your assets, always look at increasing your income, you know, get your assets to pay for your liabilities. And that, that's important. That's why doing a net worth statement, you know, looking at your assets, looking at what's coming in, looking at the cash flow, that's why it's important to do. They are five ways to prepare for a property market crash. So just to go over those five again, in no particular order. Number one, speak to your mortgage broker, look at your mortgages at the moment, take the advice necessary, get onto deals if you need to get onto fixed term deals or whatever you are advised. Number two, stress test your portfolio. If a crash did happen and interest rates went up, what would your mortgage situation look like? You can also do that for your own private residence as well if you're mortgaged. Have your monthly operating expenses account in a healthy situation. So again, looking to put away between three to six months of income into a savings account somewhere. Again, you could do that for business and for personal. Number four, keep looking for opportunities. Markets will crash and when they crash, that's normally when it presents a lot of great opportunities. 
that's where you want to be a, a cash buyer or you know have investors in your network that have got a serious amount of cash because you could do a lot of sweeping up and possibly obtain a hell of a lot of property number five keep a profit and loss spreadsheet or a running accounts spreadsheet so what's your current financial position what's going on could you survive for x amount of months if no income came in what's your net worth you know look at all of that and that can help you to forecast as well hopefully that helps uh, as always thank you for listening to the show feel free to tell other people about the show sign up to the newsletter as well uh, go onto the website tpmpodcast.com dish out a newsletter every monday um, i think too in depth good fun to do so please do go and check that out as well until next time hasta luego